What would you do if you knew you were going to die in a week? Maybe that question makes you uncomfortable. It does most of us. Our society has a real phobia around talking about death, in planning for it, in accepting it. Maine has had a death with dignity or medically aided dying law for a little more than a year now. But people in the medical community here who have elected to participate, who believe in offering terminal patients the option to end their suffering when they are ready, are reticent to talk about it. Fortunately, one patient was not. Eric Carlson contacted me last spring when the law was being debated. He was staring down a terminal illness with an awful end. He wasn't sure he would choose this option, but he wanted the choice, and eventually he seized it. We caught up with him and his loved ones in Edgecombe last month with his self-imposed countdown ticking. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel pretty good now. For Eric Carlson, the last 19 months have been a terrifying ride, one that started with numbness in his arm. And they sent me for an MRI to see if just that, if I pinched a nerve in my neck and I came back, uh, 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 that's like just a strawberry size brain tumor is right, right here. It was a stage four glioblastoma. These tumors have tentacles that worm their way through the brain. Surgery will never get all of them. It just came <laughs> just out of nowhere that fast, which is crazy. A devastating diagnosis for a rugged outdoorsman who jumped into wildfires out west, then ran a forestry business here for the last 30 years. Surgery, chemo, radiation, physical therapy, it was exhausting. But by summer, Eric felt better, knowing he was terminal, though not fully accepting it. The only thing you can do is just live your life. And he did. He took his daughters to visit relatives in Sweden. It was no longer, oh, this would be such a fun thing to do. I hope we get to do that. It was, we're doing this. Eric took his partner Stephanie to the Caribbean, his best buds on hunting trips, and... Oh, get out taught his nephew how to fish. He danced and embraced the things and people he loved. I was 100% sure in my mind, like I was the anomaly. But cancer had other plans. This past summer, Eric started having seizures. He lost his balance, some cognitive function, and his driver's license. Another tumor had formed, more surgery, treatment, hospitalization. As Eric puts it, he was back on the hamster wheel. You're just back in this, like, this, this crummy fair ride that you just, you, you can't get off of. But this time around was different. Eric was in tremendous pain. Reality closed in. The final decline had begun. There's really no, no happy ending with it. Aware of Maine's death with dignity law, Eric, with Stephanie by his side, broached the subject with his doctors. I was a little bit worried when we first called that we were going to have to try to sell this. Like, like they were interviewing us whether they were going to give us our mortgage or not. Nothing could have been further from the truth. He says his doctors made it clear they were supportive of whatever choice he made around how and when he wanted to die. No longer able to work in the woods, to hunt, to dance, Eric felt he was losing the things that made him, him. I don't want just days. I want to be me and do the things I want to do and be able to do. So it was clear to me then that that was, that, that train was leaving the station pretty quickly. He debated it for some time. Then one night his decision became crystal clear. It was time to stop the hamster wheel for him and for his family. I've had a harder time picking out which hot fudge sundae to get, you know, like it, it, it was so clear, like, this is it. He put in his formal request, got a second opinion confirming he had six months or less, saw a psychologist who declared him of sound mind, completed two waiting periods, and then, as his decline got worse, he set a date eight days after this interview. I know that it's the right decision for him. Um, he hasn't wavered. There's just an absolute peacefulness to it where, you know, all my affairs are in order, you know, everything's done, and now you can plan for the positive things. I'm never going to really lose who he is 
and all of my memories of him will be exactly who he is. And we all just come together and we joke around and we make sure, you know, everything is the same as it always has been. So what do you do with your last eight days? We're just going with the flow so far. His best friend helped Eric get back in his beloved skitter for one last ride, the fun kind. This was Eric's last day. Surrounded by family, he took his prescription and drifted off one day after celebrating his 50th birthday.